welcome to the faith community of St. Dennis and our celebration of Mass today. Today we celebrate the community. Our presider at this Mass is Father Lou, and he is assisted by Deacon George. We remember in a special way at this Mass George Taylor, John Mullen, and Anne Zeitler. As we begin our celebration of Mass, please stand, open your hymnal, and join in singing our gathering hymn, As with Gladness, number 551, As with Gladness. <coughs>
upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadow of this world, reach to the brightness of our eternal hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever.
promise that as he will claim peace through Jesus Christ to his glory the Lord. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, he went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
There's a real fear of unending catastrophic violence in places such as Korea and the Ukraine, along with the distinct possibility of repeated domestic attacks in our country's power stations. Yet for the past several weeks, we once again hear the all too familiar Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany stories of how God came into this world and how many seekers have come to find Him. Oddly, since my father's death, I've reflected on something in the Gospels that never previously caught my attention. It's the first words always spoken to us by the angels. Whether it was the angel appearing to Zechariah announcing that he was to be the father of the Baptist in his old age, or the message to the teenage and unwed mother of our Lord announcing his conception, similar to all the pregnant mothers in precarious social situations who have experienced the same. It was proclaimed to Joseph so that he would not embarrass the one he was engaged to through divorce, just like all fathers who constantly worry over their, father, their family's health, safety, and future. It was proclaimed yet another time to the couple when they were instructed to take their child and flee to the distant land of Egypt on a road laden with robbers and violent strangers, similar to how our refugees and immigrants journey today. And finally, to all the townspeople, commoners, and shepherds in the night of our Savior's birth, their message always begins with one of these two phrases, be not afraid or fear not. And this week, as we quickly wrap up the church's season of Christmas, the Magi are warned in a dream by the angels to seek another route and to not be afraid in failing to return to Herod. <coughs> Jesus was born and raised in the specter of scandal. His life profoundly human involved work and rest, friendship and betrayal, delight and sorrow. And yet the simple back village child is visited by a caravan of learned visitors. I think the message the Magi holds for us people in 2023 is that no one is excluded from the love of God. We're all foreigners, in a sense, seeking something more. Divorced, separated, different, or awkward, perhaps out of the social loop, we are sinful, addicted, full of shameful deeds and betrayals. We're often unforgiving and vengeful. Alienated in thousands of ways, we are moral outsiders, but the Magi make room for us. Gay or straight, addict or in the need of recovery, man or woman, adult or child, Faithful or faithless, saint or sinner, we are all foreigners seeking God's love. And that is why I believe the Magi hold a more mystical place in our hearts than the shepherds. You see, the shepherds are told every aspect of the Christmas story. The angel points them on their way in the exacting details that include the place, the participants, and even how our Savior is dressed. The angels appear over the manger and the heavenly hosts sing these commoners back to the familiarity of their flocks. And so the shepherds have no problems or questions, no persecutors or mystery. The Messiah is literally pointed out to them. Our experience, however, is more like the ever-searching and seeking magi. Some of us are at the end of our rope, desperate for a liberator longing for deliverance from poverty or human trafficking, mental illness, war, violence, or injustice. Some of us are seekers of a different sort, longing not for deliverance, but for a life worth living, a life full of death, purpose, and love. Many of us have difficulty in our daily travels. We have modern-day Herods that attempt to destroy our lives. We sometimes see the star, and other times face only clouds and darkness. We, like the Magi, struggle on our journey with only a vision, our faith, and a smattering of hope to guide us. We've all taken a chance, and yet we cannot do it alone. Those who are younger or stronger can assist those of us who are older or weaker, tired or discouraged. And so, fellow seekers, 
I urge those who are resolute in faith to support those of us who may be in doubt, or tepid, or simply exhausted from our journey. Unlike the Magi who followed the star in the sky, or the shepherds who were told to be not afraid, the messages we each receive from God no longer seem so obvious. If we are one of the many that doubt our modern-day angels and their messages to be not afraid, we only need to look to each other because we are companions on a journey. For in each other, with full faith and trust in ourselves and Christ, we can discover our own version of not being afraid. We need to seek out that one person who shines for us, who has that spark and sees the same spark within us. They are our star as we may be theirs. And once found, we should permit their light to help lead the way out of fear and anxiety of our times. Each of you give me strength, as I hope I occasionally provide for you. Each of you encourage me to move forward when I feel weary and weak. And that, my friends, is why we seek and why we continue to journey together. The journey of the Magi is a reminder that our pilgrimage toward God is long. As the Magi sought out a king, they found a poor child. And so our journey will often offer surprises as well. Into our world of fear and anxiety, Christ comes to proclaim the song of the angels, Fear Not. And in an effort to draw us close, God uses stars and prophecy, poetry and relentlessness, stories and traditions. If each of us are open to truly seeing, anything and everything can be our own. Christ, the true light of the world, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, open the hearts of all to you. Enkindle in us a longing for your kingdom, and let there be peace in our world, we pray. Glory to Christ, the divine physician, be with all who are sick or suffering in body, mind, and spirit, and give your grace to all those who care for them, we pray. Glory Christ our Savior, your name is blessed for all ages. Show the wonders of your saving power to our deceased sisters and brothers. In particular, remember those for whom this Mass is intended, for those whose names and faces we now remember. This afternoon, we remember Robert Perry, William Griffith, and John Kessler. We pray. Lord, Lord. And now let us offer to Christ those petitions that we brought here in the anxiety of our day. <coughs> Strengthen each of us as we prepare to share in this simple meal. We pray. Lord, Christ Jesus, today you reveal to all that you are the Word made flesh. Your light is strong, your love is near. Draw us beyond the limits which this world imposes to the life where the Spirit makes all life complete. We offer this prayer to you, live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Right. 
right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we are <laughs> Of your Son, 
whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us what our earthly pilgrimage has done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Dennis, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be
The new series for the men's group begins this Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the upstairs meeting room of the school. On Friday, January 20th, Bishop O'Connor will celebrate a Mass for Life at the Coe Cathedral in Freehold at 11 a.m., followed by a luncheon and a seminar. Registration is required by January 10th, and our bulletin has more details if you are interested. Let us pray. by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go, we have a new server here, first time that he served. All by